Huawei has just launched their flagship smartphone. This is the P30 Pro. So today is actually their launch event here in New Zealand and I'm on the way to go uh, photograph this event and um, because the event will be happening in the evening so I thought it would be good for me to test out the P30 Pro camera so I'll be taking some photos using the P30 Pro and I'm going to share with you right now Hello everyone, welcome back to my office. So uh, what do you think about the photos that I captured during the event? Uh, personally, I am very impressed because before the event, I was just thinking it may be a bit too much for the P30 Pro to handle because it's a night outdoor event. So the venue itself is quite dark and then we also have some really high power, rapidly changing stage lighting. So I was thinking maybe I could only capture a handful of nice photo using the P30 Pro but turns out I actually got a lot of pretty decent quality photo um, that evening from the P30 Pro so personally I'm pretty impressed and also the fact that I can switch between the ultra wide angle camera the main camera and then the telephoto camera to capture some slightly different photos so um, yeah, that makes it um, a pretty versatile camera but I'll talk about the image quality and the camera a little bit more later in this review and before we start the review just a quick disclaimer Huawei sent me the P30 Pro for the review and a couple of years ago I also did a photo exhibition and um, Huawei was one of my sponsors for that photo exhibition so if you want you can take my words in this review with a grain of salt but just like how I also work with other camera manufacturers when I'm working on review and I always request my review to be um, independent so that I can be as uh, fair and unbiased as possible so um, in this review I also talk about the things I like and I don't like about the P4 Pro just like all my other reviews as well so anyway let's start the review the P4 Pro is the latest smartphone the fresh smartphone from Huawei last year uh, with the P20 Pro, uh, Huawei introduced the triple Leica camera setup and that was probably one of the most talked about smartphone or the smartphone feature in 2018 and this year they come back with a few improvements including the quad Leica camera setup but before we go and talk about the camera more uh, let's talk about the phone itself first so the phone it has a 6.5 inch OLED curved display very nice color good brightness it may not be the highest resolution panel uh, in the market right now but to me I feel like the resolution is good enough now I just said it has a curved display and um, so far I actually still don't really see what's the benefit of having a curved display um, to me it's um, apart from it make the phone easier to grip because of the curved display um, it does make the edge of the display a little bit harder to read uh, especially when you are taking photos or viewing photos the um, very edge of the frame now becomes slightly distorted or harder to see so when you are taking photos sometimes I find that I, can, I can't really get the perfect framing because of the curved display but if you don't agree with me and you actually think the curved display is quite good feel free to leave a comment below and let me know why you prefer to have the curved display 
the display has very minimal bezel so uh, pretty much go all the way to the edges um, including the top and the bottom and the top it has a teardrop notch if you have watched my previous review you know that i'm not a fan of notch uh, so usually after i got the phone one of the first thing i do is that i will go to the settings and then i will try to hide the notch by turning the top bit into a black bar but this is the first time ever that I actually okay with the notch uh, I leave it like that like default with a notch visible for a few days and after a few days I still okay with it so now I'm getting used to it and um, yeah I think I'll be happy to keep it like that and that's because the notch is quite small and right in the middle it doesn't actually um, it's not really intrusive but because of the notch is quite small what it means is that there's only one camera hiding inside the notch instead of the two camera and with uh, earpiece and a lot of um, other sensor and things like that so there's only one camera so it means a couple of things first thing is the face unlock is only relying on one camera so I would imagine it's not as secure as the multi-camera setup uh, face detection system and also I noticed the um, reliability of the face detection is not as good if you compare to the Mate 20 Pro with the Mate 20 Pro I can unlock it pretty much under any lighting condition 100% uh, it works 100% of the time even when I'm in the pitch black room I can still unlock uh, by just showing it in front of my face and unlock immediately with the P30 Pro um, sometimes when it's under really uh, like when in a really dark room it could not unlock the phone for me at least not the first time sometimes I have to try it um, two times or three times they managed to unlock the phone for me or sometimes I have to revert back to use the in-screen fingerprint sensor but that brings to the next point the in-screen fingerprint sensor just like the Mate 20 Pro it has an in-screen finger fingerprint sensor and this time the in-screen fingerprint sensor seems to work quite a bit faster and also quite a bit more reliable as well um, there's nothing wrong with the one on the Mate 20 Pro but in comparison the P30 Pro uh, fingerprint sensor seems to be just much faster and just um, works pretty much every single time when I put my finger um, on the scanner itself so yeah it's a bit of um, trade-off the face um, the face unlock is probably not as good but on the other hand the fingerprint um, scanner is quite a bit better And because the notch is so small there's no place for um, Huawei to install a earpiece so instead they use um, electromagnetic levitation to basically to vibrate the front um, the front panel to generate audio um, yeah I was a bit skeptical about this I'm not sure whether the when I'm talking on the phone whether the the audio quality would be good or not the first time I made a phone call I was very surprised by how loud and how clear the audio generated by the vibration is um, I can listen to the, the other people on the phone very clearly and very loudly through the vibration of the uh, front panel so yeah definitely that works very well on the P30 Pro the phone has an IP68 uh, waterproof rating so that means you can um, if you drop the phone onto water or um, just take some photo underwater you don't have to worry about damaging the phone I have took a few photos or uh, video under water and there's no problem at all and also uh, what I quite like to do is that I actually put the phone underwater to wash it every day or two because the phone is actually one of the the, the dirtiest uh, piece of gadget that we'll be holding every day because we hold it all the time and take it everywhere so um, there's a lot of germ and dirt on on the surface on the phone so I like to put it under water and clean it like every day or two to make it nice and clean the P30 Pro has a very large 42,000 milliamp battery it can easily last more than one full day of heavy use even if you use the phone a lot or use it to take a lot of photo or video it can still last a whole day of usage and when you run out of juice on the phone you can charge it using the um, the supplied supercharge 
charging brick and you can charge up to 70% battery within 30 minutes so that is definitely very good and just like the Mate 20 Pro the P30 Pro also can do uh, wireless charging and also reverse wireless charging so what that means is that you can use the P30 Pro to charge your other um, Bluetooth device headset or even another phone uh, doesn't have to be a Huawei phone it can be an iPhone or any other phone that um, that can be wireless charged so that is a very cool and handy feature The phone comes with 8GB of memory and also 256GB of storage so that is plenty of memory and storage but if that is still not enough for you, you can add some external memory by using the proprietary Huawei Nano SD card. Uh, I have mentioned it before, I'm not a big fan of proprietary memory card including the Huawei Nano SD card. I would much prefer if they use the micro SD card instead. Having said that, having the option to install some external memory card is still better than not having any option at all. The P30 Pro is using Huawei's latest Kirin 980 processor. This is the first 7 nanometer processor in the world. Uh, it's a very powerful processor and it's the same one that was used on the Mate 20 Pro as well. But even compared to the Mate 20 Pro, even though they're using the same processor, but somehow I feel like uh, everything just runs a bit smoother. Um, launching app, it just uh, feel a lot more snappy, just a lot faster on the P30 Pro compared to the Mate 20 Pro, so maybe Huawei has made some adjustment optimization um, on the operating system to make everything just run a little bit smoother and faster. Overall, the build quality of the P30 Pro just feel very good, very solid, and I'm um, surprisingly with such a big screen and also a big battery. Um, hold it in the hand first. It feels quite comfortable. It doesn't feel like a very large phone that you can't really handle it easily. Like I don't have a really large hand, but I can hold it quite easily. Um, and also secondly, the phone doesn't feel like um, very heavy at all because if you think about it, it has a 42,000 milliamp battery and a 6.5 inch screen. So yeah, um, and also with the glass and metal material it used, you thought it would feel quite heavy, but not really. When, it, when I first time picked it up, I actually surprised by um, how light the phone is. Okay, now let's talk about the main feature of the phone and also main focus of this review, which is the uh, camera on this P30 Pro. On the front of the phone, you have the 32 megapixel front camera. Uh, it's a very high resolution front camera. I don't really know what other phone has a higher resolution front camera than this one. And you can definitely take some very nice and sharp selfie with the P30 Pro and probably too sharp for uh, a lot of people. So um, if that's the case, that's all right because the camera app that comes with the P30 Pro, there are some beauty mode and adjustment that you can use to soften up the skin and do a few adjustment if this is what you like for your selfie. The front camera also has the AI HDR Plus mode and that does allow you to capture um, nice selfie with properly exposed face and the background even when you're shooting under very uh, high contrast backlit condition um, your face and the background can still be um, very well exposed as well. The front camera is fixed focus so what that means is if you are planning to use a very long selfie stick to take your selfie then this is probably not the best camera for you to use um, if you want yourself to be sharp and focused. Okay, next let's flip to the back of the phone and talk about the brand new quad Leica camera setup at the back of the phone. There are four cameras at the back of the phone. The first one is a 20 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and the second one is a 40 megapixel main camera and the third one is the 8 megapixel 5 times optical uh, telephoto camera and the last one is a completely new one is the time of flight camera. Uh, the time of flight camera basically allow the camera to capture the depth information uh, of the photo that is capturing and what that means is um, when you are taking photo the camera can 
know how um, the distance between the camera and the objects that you are shooting so if you are shooting in the aperture mode or the portrait mode then it can render the bokeh the background transition um, how it dissolves the, the background more in a more realistic and beautiful way compared to the other uh, phone that doesn't have the time of flight camera and here are the two photos that I shot side by side using the P20 Pro and the P30 Pro. So P30 Pro has the time of flight cameras. As you can see, the background of the P30 Pro photo does look more realistic how it rendered the background. Um, the transition it seems to be better and also how it um, detects the outline of the foreground object seems to be more accurate as well. So the ultra wide angle camera, uh, it has a 20 megapixel sensor behind the camera and at the front it has a f2.2 aperture lens and it can capture 120 degree field of view. So this is a very very wide, um, ultra wide angle view that you can uh, compare to the normal camera. So this is a quick photo that compared the normal camera and then this ultra wide angle camera. The ultra wide angle camera definitely can capture much wider angle and um, I find that when I'm using a P30 Pro this is the camera that I switch to very regularly because I just love how the um, the different perspective um, that the ultra wide angle camera that can capture for me compared to the other two camera and it's also very useful for example when you are taking photo indoor and you want to fit in a group of people this is the camera that can do that um, while if you switch back to the normal camera then it you struggle sometimes to fit all the people inside uh, a small room. I did notice the ultra wide angle camera has quite a bit of vignetting. Um, if you shoot JPEG you probably wouldn't notice it because the camera would automatically apply some vignetting correction so the output JPEG would not uh, have the vignetting really noticeable but if you are shooting raw photo then you do have to apply a bit of vignetting correction if you don't want to have any vignetting in your final photo. Next, let's talk about the 40 megapixel main camera on the P30 Pro. So if you think this is just the same camera as last year's P20 Pro, this is definitely not true. Now, first, the lens is now a new f1.6 aperture lens. So this is a brand new lens that is faster than the one available last year on the P20 Pro. And the sensor itself is also different. This is the world's first RYYB sensor. Um, that is not available before on any camera at all. So this is the world's first RYYB sensor on any kind of camera. So if you're wondering what that means, what RYYB means, let me try to quickly explain to you what does that mean and how is it different to the typical uh, sensor um, on the market right now. So pretty much 99% of the camera in the market right now is using the RGB design which has the RGGB Bayer pattern. So RGGB is red, green, green, blue. So that means half of the sensor is, um, is used to capture green information. And what that means is that half of the sensor is um, filtered out all the red and blue light. So it can only capture green light. So with the new RYYB sensor design, it means the camera, the half of the camera sensor is actually capturing white, which means yellow information. And yellow is a combination of red and green. So that means half of the image sensor is capturing both red and green information, only filter out blue information. So that means it's capturing more light than the traditional sensor. So Huawei claimed that it can capture 40% more light compared to the traditional sensor. And uh, that means the low light performance is actually quite a bit better. Um, here are the two uh, photos that I shot side by side using P20 Pro and P30 Pro. The same ISO and also the same shutter speed. The photo from the P30 Pro is quite a bit brighter. And what that means is when I'm shooting under low light condition, I can shoot at quite a bit lower ISO uh, than the P20 Pro and that means I can have better image quality compared to uh, even the P20 Pro which is already pretty good in terms of low light performance. And because of that, Huawei has also increased the uh, maximum ISO rating for the phone as well. The P20 Pro has a pretty awesome 100K uh, ISO maximum ISO rating which is 
pretty ridiculous already for a smartphone but this year with the p30 pro they have increased it by four times so now the maximum iso is 409,000 iso on the p30 pro which is even more ridiculous but of course this 409,000 maximum iso is um, a result of uh, both the very good high iso performance of the sensor but also using some very clever compute rotational photography trick together to generate this ridiculously high ISO output. And here is a quick example to show you how good the low light performance this um, P30 Pro's camera is. So this is the indoor studio room and then I um, just turn off all the light and just shut off everything so the room is pretty much just pitch black. So first I take a photo using P20 Pro at its maximum ISO. The result is already pretty good because as I said, the room is pretty much pitch black. Um, but now let me show you the photo that I shot using the P30 Pro at the maximum ISO. As you can see, the photo is actually a lot better than the P20 Pro and this shows you how much better it is compared to last year's king of low light. It can capture a lot more light and the detail is quite a lot better and just to show you how much Huawei has improved their phone uh, year after year I show you a photo that I shot using the P10 which is just two years ago also at the maximum ISO and as you can see at the maximum ISO of 3200 it basically can't capture pretty much anything inside this uh, really dark room at all and this is what P20 Pro can capture and this is what P30 Pro can capture every year there's some pretty amazing improvement compared to last year's model and Huawei also has this very famous night mode and um, this is the photo I captured using P20 Pro's night mode the picture quality is actually pretty good already it's probably not suitable for printing but uh, to capture something under very low light condition, I think uh, it does a very amazing job. And this is the photo that I capture using P30 Pro's night mode. Once again, the photo quality is a lot better. It captures a lot more fine detail. Just overall, the picture quality has improved quite a lot even compared to um, the P20 Pro. So yeah, I'm definitely very impressed by what the um, P30 Pro managed to capture under the very, very low light, almost pitch black condition. But the low light performance is not the only thing that the P30 Pro's main camera is good at. Um, when shooting under good lighting condition, the camera can capture very high resolution. That is 40 megapixel output. If you like to shoot raw file, you will be amazed by how much detail the P30 Pro managed to capture and also I did some comparison with the P20 Pro it seems like Huawei has also improved the optics on the P30 Pro quite a bit as well as you can see the P30 Pro managed to capture more um, fine detail when you compare to the P20 Pro if you're wondering why no one has done a RYYB sensor before it's because RYYB sensor does require quite a lot of processing um, for it to get back to the normal picture output because now the um, you have to do some very clever filtering processing from the the white yellow sensor on the camera to get back the um, the green information and Huawei did a very good job using its Kirin 980 processor to process the image and if you compare the raw photo output from the P30 and P20 Pro one thing you would notice quite quickly is that the red color rendered quite differently on the P30 and P20 the red seems to be more like an orange color from the p30 pro raw output um, especially if we put it side by side with the p20 pro raw file you will immediately notice that so with a few quick adjustment to the red and orange channel um, in photoshop then you can make it look exactly like the same as the p20 pro so you can see the jpeg file doesn't have this problem but if you are planning to shoot raw file then this is something that you have to pay attention to when you are processing the raw file yourself Next, let's talk about the telephoto camera on the P30 Pro because this is definitely one of the key features uh, of the core camera setup. Huawei used a periscope design to allow it to fit a 5x 
telephoto lens onto the P3 pole without increasing the, the depth of the camera module or the phone itself. So this is definitely a very important and clever trick that Huawei did because nobody wants a uh, phone that is a lot thicker just because it has a higher power telephoto lens. The telephoto lens captured very nice and clean photo at the 5 times optical zoom. And if you want, you can also go to 10 times hybrid zoom. And what that means is um, Huawei is using both the telephoto camera and also the 40 megapixel pixel main camera and uh, using some processing technique to combine the information from the two camera together to give you a pretty high quality output that is at the 10 times zoom look at this photo i capture using the 10 times hybrid zoom the picture quality is still very nice and um, it captured lots of fine details if 10 times zoom is still not enough you can go up to 50 times using the digital zoom so um, at 50 times digital zoom <laughs> uh, the result is pretty crazy look at this photo of the moon i captured the other day using the p3 pro now, of course, this is not a very high quality photo, but remember, this is captured using a smartphone camera. So uh, personally, I'm very impressed by the output from the P30 Pro. Of course, anything that captured using digital zoom just means uh, crop and enlarge. So if you want good quality photos, I would say just uh, stay with five times optical zoom and 10 times hybrid zoom. But having said that, um, the digital zoom can be quite useful sometimes. For example, I just use it as like a pocket telescope to um, help me to see something that is far, far away. Um, very handy. Or if you don't really need very high quality photo, then the digital zoom can be quite handy sometimes as well. While I'm pretty happy with the photo that I managed to capture at five times uh, optical zoom and 10 times hybrid zoom, because the sensor of the telephoto camera is actually quite small and also it has a relatively slow aperture. So the image quality and also the autofocus performance of the telephoto lens is only performing the best when you are shooting under um, very good bright lighting condition. So when you're shooting indoor or when the uh, scene is getting dark, then both the picture quality and the autofocus performance will starting to drop quite a bit. But no matter what, having a phone that has a camera that can cover from a very wide, ultra wide angle all the way to uh, 10 times zoom uh, just give you a lot more flexibility um, of what you can capture. So for example, the other day I was having dinner with my family. We were in a very nice restaurant that with a very fantastic view. Uh, there was evening, early evening, and uh, my daughter just suddenly saw that the, the moon is just rising um, from behind the mountain. So I quickly switched to the telephoto lens and capture a photo like this through the window of the restaurant. So yeah, that just gives me a lot of flexibility when I'm traveling and also remember the um, different focal length does not actually just means you can shoot wider or you can zoom to the, the um, objects that's far away you can also use the different focal length to allow you to capture the same scene in a very different way so this is a quick example of the two photos I'm shooting the same object but using one using the ultra wide angle lens and the other one is using the telephoto lens and you can see the main object in the scene is the same in both photos but the photo looks completely different because of the different perspective uh, from the different focal length In terms of video recording, the front camera can capture um, full HD video and the quality from the front camera is pretty decent, um, very sharp, very good color and also can handle high contrast scene pretty well. But having said that, some other competitor, uh, the front camera can capture up to 4K resolution video while Huawei can only do 1080p video. So this is something that Huawei is lagging behind a little bit. 
and for the rear camera it can capture 4k video up to 30 frames per second and um, i am definitely very impressed by the video quality from the rear camera especially the main camera i can capture some very nice quality video when i'm shooting under low light condition however the p30 pro still cannot capture 4k 60p footage so um, again this is something that some of the competitor can do while the p30 pro can't do Another thing I want to see is to have more menu adjustment available um, using the camera app that comes with the P30 Pro when you are recording video. So um, for example, I want to be able to set the set and lock the shutter speed. So this is right now not available um, with the camera app that comes with the P30 Pro. But overall, I definitely see quite a lot of improvement in terms of video recording um, that comes with the P30 Pro compared to the previous phone from Huawei. Let's talk about the camera app that comes with the P30 Pro a little bit. Uh, if you have used any of the recent Huawei smartphones, so you should be quite familiar with the camera app. The overall design is pretty much the same. Um, I mentioned it before, I really like the camera app that's available on the Huawei smartphone. It just um, very easy to use if you just want to take a quick photo and if you want to apply some um, menu adjustment there's a pro mode that allows you to adjust pretty much everything and then there are lots of other um, different features special mode for example the light painting mode which is my favorite I've also made a, a light painting mode video that tell you how to use light painting mode to capture some nice uh, landscape photo I put a link below so if you haven't watched that one uh, watch it after this review so there are lots of different camera settings and features that's available in the camera app that comes with the P30 Pro. If this is the first time you are using a Huawei smartphone, I definitely recommend you to spend a bit of time and go through most of the settings and feature. You will find something that could be quite useful for you. Huawei has also made a few changes to the user interface of the camera app. For example, the master AI that used to be in the setting screen, they have now moved it to the main screen at the top of the main screen. So you can easily toggle it on and off. And I myself find it quite useful because even though most of the time I do leave the master AI on when I'm shooting photo using the normal photo mode, sometimes I want to turn it off for example I'm taking some portrait photo but I don't want the um, the rendered uh, shadow depth of field effect then I would just turn off the master AI completely um, so yeah I think this is a good change but then there are a few things that I would like to see um, to see change in the camera app that I still haven't seen for example the, the main menu scroll bar that's available on the main screen I would like to see it to be customizable so people can put the feature that they want to use the most on that um, that bar so instead of having uh, the fixed one that is picked by Huawei uh, for example if I like to shoot black and white a lot then I can just put it in the, the main menu bar so I don't have to go to the secondary screen to select it so yeah this is definitely something that I would love to see in the future firmware update one thing a lot of people complain about the P20 Pro is that the JPEG generated by the camera app seems to be over sharpened um, so because of that a lot of people actually have to shoot raw and then convert to the JPEG themselves to make it not so over sharpened uh, fortunately with the P30 Pro this is not a problem anymore the JPEG from the camera app is definitely not over sharpened on a similar topic I noticed that the JPEG generated by the P30 Pro sometimes it has a bit of that um, I don't know how to say it. it's like a HDR ish processing uh, feel to it so um, yeah it looks like the shadow has been lift a little bit or the character has bumped up a little bit or something like that it looks quite nice in some of the photos but then in some of the photos it looks a little bit too processed um, unfortunately I don't see there's any way to turn off the HDR processing thing completely in the JPEG output if you know there's a way to turn it off please leave a comment below and let me know as well so overall P30 Pro is definitely another very solid uh, flagship smartphone from Huawei the Build quality is definitely excellent. The phone looks very nice, stylish, with more and more um, Huawei DNA as they say that it looks like a Huawei product. The screen, the processor are very good quality. The very large battery and also the battery life is definitely very impressive. 
And if you talk about the camera on the P30 Pro, so Huawei used the tagline, we write the rule of photography. Um, is it true? Is it not true? It's kind of true and it's kind of not true. And um, I say that because while this is a very nice camera setup, it's still just a camera. So it's not like suddenly you can capture some photo that you couldn't do with another camera. But on the other hand, this is the first time ever that you have a camera system on a smartphone that can handle um, first, it can capture very nice photo under ridiculously low light condition. Second, you can capture very high resolution photo, 40 megapixel photo. And third, it can also cover from very wide ultra wide angle all the way to 10 times hybrid zoom and still output decent quality photo. So with all these three together, you now have a super versatile camera system that you can carry with you. Like you can bring with you all the time that you can fit into the pocket. So right now, while it's still not as good as a professional camera setup, but compare the size and cost of a professional camera setup, you need to buy a very big, large, expensive body and you have multiple lenses. The smartphone is just one small device you can fit into your pocket. While I'm not planning to shoot wedding, at least not professionally using a P30 Pro anytime soon, I'm just very impressed by the camera system on the P30 Pro. Uh, if you have any questions about the camera on the P30 Pro or the phone itself, feel free to leave me a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you again very soon.